So uh, it's good Brandon talked about a lot about LTS uh, because I'm going to reference that in my talk. So the organizers put the stuff in the right order. So thank you, the organizers. Uh, so uh, my name is Matthew Darwin. I'm based in Ottawa, Canada. And um, I'm going to talk about what we did, a uh, hyper-local version of level of traffic stress maps rather than uh, on a national scale. So just a little bit about Ottawa. It's the national capital region in Canada. Uh, it's actually really two cities in one. And if you think about the combined cities of Gatineau and Ottawa together, it's about 23 times larger than Manhattan with about the same population. So when we're talking about this project, this is the scope of what we're trying to map. It's also two cities, two provinces, two different languages with the federal government being the largest landowner. So if you think about data complexity, now luckily we got a lot of open data from the different groups, but the only way to combine all that together in a practical fashion is OpenStreetMap. So that's why I'm here. So uh, Bike, Ottawa, Bike Ottawa, which I'm the volunteer with, is an advocacy group. We don't get any government funding. Well, maybe the city council gives us a little money here and there. But, uh, you know, we want to promote uh, better bicycle infrastructure in the Ottawa area. And I put this picture here because if all the bike infrastructure was like what you see here, we wouldn't need uh, Bike Ottawa because uh, on the left, that's the U.S. Embassy. And you can imagine what those are not just, you know, uh, you know, wiki, uh, you know, plastic things. That's real concrete uh, barriers after post 9-11. So, uh, yeah, that's the world's most protected bike lane, probably. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, we're going to talk about level of traffic stress, you know, about where you want to go. So at the end of that picture, if you followed it to the end, you would actually be at this intersection. So, uh, you know, we're going to talk about uh, on a rating of one to four. And I'm going gonna, gonna to skip a bunch of details here because we just heard about that. So um, uh, Heather Shearer, who's a president of Bike Ottawa, uh, actually describes build the, the process that I'm going to talk about, what we went through, as three easy steps. Easy steps. All right. So first, uh, we want to document. So our, our city councilor did give us a little bit of money. What we didn't spend on pizza, we actually um, bought some cameras with. And the idea being, let's put these on the front of our bikes. As we're biking around all of the different bike paths in the city or the roads, uh, let's take pictures. And then, because uh, sometimes uh, city council likes to ask us, what's your opinion on doing something about this bike path? But they ask in the middle of February. Right, so we really know what's there uh, in February, not. So if we have pictures, then we can refer to that uh, when they happen to ask us. So with that idea and with the scope of the city, which is ginormous, uh, we decided, well, let's do a mapillary or mapillary challenge. Uh, let's see how many of the roads and paths in the Ottawa area we can cover uh, in a you know, one month period. And at the end of the month, well, this is how far we got. So the downtown area is the green square kind of squares in the middle. And uh, my contribution was largely those green squares on the left side. Uh, so I did a lot of uh, actually driving in cars uh, because, you know, from one side to the other, it's like 30 minutes back and forth. So uh, that's a lot to do in bikes looking. So... Uh, what was great is the, the Mapillary guys gave us a shout out and they said this was like the most successful community campaign in 2017. Uh, even though we didn't finish the map, um, we, we did generate a lot of interest uh, in the project. So we're still on step one. Let's try to document what's out there. And here's what the coverage looked like in Mapillary before the challenge and after the challenge. Uh, which is kind of cool. And then I just, you know, this week just took a screenshot of the whole city and, uh, you know, there's where we are. So the coverage continues to go up over time, even though there's not an active challenge going on. Uh, it's still an interesting project. And, you know, uh, Heather, one of our volunteers, she, every day on her way to work during that challenge period, she was like, okay, let me find a route that I can cycle to work, which hasn't been covered already, right? So she would like go way around, anyway. That was, that's how we got uh, that kind of coverage. 
And here's what that challenge grid looks like now. And if you look at the, the west side, which you know I spent a lot of time on, uh, what's left, which is not dark green, is you need a snowmobile or an all-terrain vehicle or something to finish those areas. You can't really do it on a bike because it's that kind of path that's kind of left. Obviously, we still got lot, lots more to do, and this will continue uh, when we have time. So if you haven't seen uh, Mapillary before, um, once you upload the photos, they're all available on the web. Each one in the, the left side over there, you can see is a green dot. Uh, you can click on it, you get a picture of what was taken at that point. And this allows us to then, you know, really refer. So this is a, an intersection of two bike paths, actually. And we can see, you know, there's a stop sign. And we can look at the, the bridge uh, above. We can see the street lights, there's uh, speed signs, etc. So it gives us a lot of rich information. And with Mapillary, it does object detection. Uh, which is great, so it tells us about all the things that we see. So we don't have to look at each picture and figure out where there's a stop sign or a yield sign or whatever. Uh, it tells us um, that that's what's in the picture, which is great. Okay, so now we have tons of photos. Um, let's label it. So we talked in the last talk about the tagging. So before we started labeling things, we actually spent a whole bunch of time looking at the OSM wiki trying to figure out what the hell is this cycling tagging thing, because it's really not clear. And so what we wanted to do is, for when we did a mapathon, we didn't want to have people struggle through how do I tag things. So what we, want, what we did is we took a, a photo that we already had just taken, and we put it on the page. So each one is an Ottawa reference. Uh, to, so people, we give you an English description of what you would see, the OSM tags that we want you to use, and then a picture. So make it really clear from a person who knows the Ottawa infrastructure what they should tag it with. So this is just a quick example, but the tag page is all of that, plus all of that, plus all of that. So we went into great detail. So if you're Confused with the general OSM wiki, I have a link to this page. You can have a look at it, and you can give us feedback if you think we got something wrong uh, as well, or we can improve it. Okay, so um, I've skipped over a whole bunch of steps, obviously, because we obviously have some mapathons here. We're actually uh, tagging all of these kinds of things in OpenStreetMap. The, o the OSM was actually pretty good before we started this project, and this project was about in just improving the data that was already there, maybe adding some missing paths, whatever. So it wasn't like there was blank space and we had to add everything. It was really improving what we already had. So, okay, so the LTS, I'm not gonna talk about it too much here, but um, you know, is there cars, is it a bike facility, is it protected, uh, et cetera. And so here's our map. Uh, we use blue and green different opposite from what you did. Uh, but otherwise the color is the same. So, um, so this is calculated in uh, real time kind of thing. So every six hours, the LTS map is recalculated on a very small AWS node. So not on massive scale, we're only doing one city. Um, but so as I make edits in OpenStreetMap, just wait a few hours and then you can see your change in, in the map. It's live. Uh, so you can click on any uh, segment of any road, and you can see what the tags are in OpenStreetMap. And then the last line in the hover over is the LTS score. So that's the one we've assigned uh, from one to four. Uh, below, you can see the mapillary photo that for some part of that segment. Uh, here's one of the mapathons uh, that we did. And during this mapathon, this is one of the slides that was presented, which is, um, hey, we're not perfect. Take the area of the city that you know, and does the LTS that we've presented on the map look correct to you? And so this, you know, we gave the local people who know the most information, do we have the right algorithms to assign the tags? Is the tags correct? Whatever, so we could use this as feedback in order to improve the, the algorithm. So we have some defaults. If it's, you know, a you know, primary road, yeah, if there's no other tags, yeah, it's an LTS4. Right, so, uh, but as people could add more information, then they could see the colors change uh, on the map. And at this time, we were running that LTS calculation much more frequently so people could see their feedback uh, right away. So all of these maps are available online. I have the, the link at the end as well. You can go online, you can have a look. 
Uh, so there's actually six maps. Um, I've just showed uh, one so far. But let's talk about the routing map, which is the second one here. So you can pick two points, pick your level of traffic stress, and then it will draw the path for you um, based on the traffic stress. Uh, if you choose LTS1, and depending on where you pick, it might tell you there's no route available between those two places because there's not a dedicated bike path. Uh, or it might move the point closer to where there is one, uh, and then, well, you have to figure out how to get there. Uh, from actually where you click on the map. So you can see here, you know, we're, we've chosen LTS2, and the it's not using the direct straight line on the, the streets, it's trying to route you around the path. So and then it'll give you how much time, it'll take you nine minutes to get from there to there. Uh, the next map, the third map that's there, is the uh, isochrome map, which is, you know, how far can you get, um, given a point and an LTS level and an amount of time. So you can see here the map extends very, you know, northeast and west, but kind of southeast is missing. So that tells us there's maybe some missing bike infrastructure there, or maybe we didn't map it properly, and so the the routing algorithm can't actually get can't actually get there. So, you know, uh, as Brandon said, uh, you know, this can inform policy on hey, there's missing infrastructure here. Uh, which is uh, needed. Now, uh, in Ottawa, like uh, many places, we have winter, which is different than the summer. So which paths are accessible in the winter for cycling uh, is very different than the summer. So what we did uh, last winter is we put together a, uh, a map, to, and we asked users to provide feedback, is this path, plowed, is this path plowed or not? Uh, so red, no, blue, yes, and yellow, um, we don't know. So uh, there's still a lot of yellow on the map. We still need to fill in uh, a lot of information. But it, it's very, rather than bringing up ID and doing a whole bunch of edits, we just made it very easy. Click yes, done. Um, so uh, some of the feedback that we've gotten on the, the maps that we've done so far, um, uh, I've posted it up here. The, the one at the top right there is some of the favorite feedback I got. It's just from the average user. It's like, I didn't know I could get from here to there in a safe way, right? So people, it just expands their, their thinking about where they can cycle. Um, so a, a whole bunch of tweets just like that. Uh, you know, we have other organizations, uh, Ottawa Safety Council now referring to these maps that we've produced and suggesting they refer to them when you're planning back to school routes for your kids. Great. Uh, on the bottom right, uh, that's city councillor, uh, Councillor Leeper, who provided us that pizza budget. Um, so he's there at, uh, you know, talking about the maps uh, that we put together as a community. This is all volunteer based uh, event. So um, just back uh, to the, uh, all that ma the mapillary photos that we took at the beginning of the project. Now, uh, since those photos were taken, there's been a bunch of integration done between Mapillary and the Osmos QA tool. So now we've taken pictures, Mapillary detects like the speed limit sign, Osmos will detect that there's a speed limit sign but the speed limit is not set in OSM. So now we know without looking through all of OSM and all of the pictures, we can say, ah, we need to add a speed limit sign here, and you can hit the fix button uh, for some of the issues, and boom, now it's fixed in OSM. So now we know the speed limit uh, for this error. So uh, our, the volunteers in Ottawa have done a, a lot of back and forth with the Osmos team in France to improve the, the, the error detection and uh, the stuff here. So this is kind of cool. Another thing that came up from the community this year is uh, people were interested is where's the bike related infrastructure? Where's the bike racks? Where's the water fountains? Where's the uh, bike shops? Where's the bike rental places? Where the bike repair stations are? Uh, this kind of thing. So I started working on a prototype map for that. It's not actually on the website yet, but this is the kind of thing we're thinking about. Another interesting thing that came out of this project is we have all this, these mapillary photos now. And somebody decided to do a pick for review uh, project using all those photos and say, uh, what amenities are at a, bike, uh, at a bus stop? So totally unrelated to, to bike mapping, but now that we have those photos, they can be used for other things. And then uh, University of Ottawa is doing a research project. Which path do you prefer to cycle on or 
So again, they use the, the mapillary photos that we had already taken, and you can click the left one or the right one, or uh, it doesn't matter to me, which is kind of cool. So, uh, so project outcomes. Uh, so we've got a photo resource that we can use to plan trips, that we can use in cycling advocacy, that other people can use. Uh, we've done a lot of improvements in uh, OSM. Um, so as part of the, the cities, they're constantly growing. So we're constantly adding new roads, new addresses, improving things um, as well. So you can type in your address, it'll find you. Um, we added a few simple ways to, to map things, uh, to contribute to OSM, either via, um, you know, uh, the LTS map has a feedback form that just fills in a Google sheet for us. And then it gives us a way to get feedback on from users without them having to worry about anything about OSM. They just, uh, they're just looking at the, the, the bike maps. And of course, um, the map resource, uh, which uh, city staff at the city of Ottawa have gone, wow, this is awesome. Um, city, the city of Ottawa says that they use LTS in planning for things, but they never had an LTS map. So I'm not sure how they did the LTS planning, but uh, now they have a map. So uh, what's next? Um, we don't have any specific projects, it's all volunteer based. So depending on who's interested in doing what, obviously, never-ending task of improving OpenStreetMap or uh, taking more photos. Uh, one of the things uh, people have definitely expressed an interest in having is a create a routing based on personalized criteria. So I mentioned the winter cycling map, but you could imagine that I'm not uh, comfortable taking unlit paths at night uh, might be a criteria, or you know they need to be at least this wide, because I have a bike with a you know I have a trike instead of a bike, so I need a wide enough path. So these kinds of uh, routing algorithms, we need some uh, improvements to the open source routing tools that we're using in order to do uh, to do that. Uh, the other thing uh, people have asked for is create what ifs maps. So if we built the bridge here, what would the routing look like uh, afterwards? Um, and then um, one thing I am started to work on is take what we've done here and apply it to another community as well. So I'm, I won't mention who it is. Uh, they seem to be interested in, in following this. Uh, I will say, though, that what I presented here is not a methodology on how to do this, but it's what we did, and it seemed to work for us. Uh, you can take some ideas here if you're interested, but you know, don't feel the need to follow exactly what we've done. Um, so here's the, the website. Everything that we've done is on GitHub, so feel free to have a look. The, the tagging guide is there, as well as all the code that we did uh, for the, the, the map front end, as, the, as well as the routing algorithm in the back end. And you can read us on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Uh, OSRM, I believe. Yes? Uh, did you use vehicle volume as an input to your LTS calculations? We did not use vehicle volume. So uh, the Mineta Institute d defines you know, a whole bunch of different criteria about how you define LTS. You know, vehicle volume and vehicle speed are two of them, which we don't have that kind of information in OSM. So we had to approximate it based on you know, what was actually available. And quite honestly, uh, the, the LTS says, you know, take into consideration this and this and this and this. In actual fact, it doesn't actually need that much detail and the map looks about right. Um, so um, uh, what, it's interesting. But, but uh, I guess one of the areas that I'm really concerned about right now and we don't have in our tagging and the OSM tagging is a bit weak, is like finding things like there's a bike lane but it's a floating bike lane, meaning that there's cars on both sides of you. So is that really an LTS2 infrastructure? Uh, no, not really. Uh, so uh, being able to tag that and recognize that and then say, well, yeah, that intersection is really not connected anymore because that's not an appropriate a level. Um, anyway, yeah, so more things that we could improve to give much more detail to, um, to what we have. How 
Okay, so the question is how many people were involved? So uh, I think ultimately there was about, maybe about 20 people. Um, and I would say maybe six or seven was, you know, 90%. Um, so it, it wasn't a huge uh, group, but but uh, other people were taking photos anyway, um, but th that was the people who were part of this project, yeah. Great, well, thank you very much.